Shepard, we're in this conversation around actualizing an intersectional anti-racist future. And of course there would be a conversation um, with folks who live and breathe and identify as artists, as the creative, yeah? So, so let's get started. Um, this is gonna be a quick 50, 55 minutes, I know, but I'll just start. Um, you know, with, with my own conversation, you know, that I have with myself. So good afternoon, friends. My name is Ashara Ekundayo. I use she and they pronouns. I'm an independent curator, a cultural strategist, and I'm an investor that is currently stewarding a philanthropic platform called Artists as First Responder that acknowledges, engages, and financially supports Black, Indigenous, and other artists of color whose creative practices heal communities and save lives. And today I'm honored, truly honored, to have been invited by the Center for Transformative Action at Mills College to hold space for three arts practitioners, Michelle Mushley, Fabiana Rodriguez, and Rondi Isaac, who as artists show up first in crisis and in celebration to forge solutions through design, practice, invitation, and presentation. Our conversation today, The Power of Culture and Joy, speaks directly to their embodied expertise. So of course, it is my pleasure and to my delight to spend time with them. I wanna also say that this particular conversation is taking place on site on the unceded lands of the steward, that have been stewarded by the Ramatush and Muwekma Ohlone peoples in this place now called the San Francisco Bay Area and specifically in Oakland, California. We acknowledge that to be on site requires that we question our relationship with the past, the present and the future, and on the sites in which we gather to live, create and make ceremony. So as we consider this power of culture um, and the power of joy as cultural practitioners, we must investigate and navigate our geographies of power and privilege. We must witness our positionalities of complacency in any ways that they affect how we relate to move through and create space. So once we consider what it means to be on site, it is pertinent that we continuously reflect and act in ways in which settler, in which art, the art sector and in which the academy are complacent, truly complacent in upholding an ongoing, an ongoing colonial structure. And so we operate inside of that world. And so while this conference and corresponding programming like this panel are free of charge, we know that it's not free. And we want to encourage the administration and the attendees to make donations to the Salgaria Te Land Trust in Oakland, California. And I will drop a link into the chat for you all to learn more about them um, and to indeed listen to the closing uh, session this afternoon with uh, the founder of the Land Trust, um, our auntie, Karina Gould. And then lastly, I wanna thank uh, I want to honor my African ancestors and giving thanks for the the guidance and the protection that they they may provide. And so, with that, uh, I want to open our conversation by pouring libation, also for those who have come before us. Ashe, for those of us who are here, living in the breath right now. Ashe, and for those who are coming. Ashe. We do this work that our ancestors be pleased. So our agenda for the next 50 minutes is as follows. By way of very abbreviated introductions that I will read, each artist will offer a short exercise to support our embodied listening. They will then present an example of their work and how their practices are not only trauma informed, but fueled by love and joy. And lastly, we will give a roll call, a shout out of additional practitioners who are cultivating understanding and healing in their service in community. And then finally, we'll take Q&A. But I, I wanna invite you all um, who have questions to drop the questions into the chat and we will try to navigate through them uh, while we talk this afternoon. And so we want you to keep this in mind that our overarching inquiry for this short time together is Really, how do artists experience, create, and conjure joy inside of this poignant time of collective reckoning, grief, and fear? So, introductions. Michelle Mushley, born in San Francisco and rooted in Oakland, California, 
Michelle Mushley is a Korean American poet and narrative strategist appointed to serve on the city of Oakland's revitalized cultural affairs commission. What up, Bush? It's good to have you here. Ara, hi, Rondi. Hi, Favi. Hi, everyone joining us from around the world. Yeah. It's an honor. It's a true, true honor to be uh, in the presence of such amazing artists and cultural workers. And um, uh, thank you, CTA. Thank you. Rondi Isaac, born in Los Angeles, but raised in the Bay, including East Palo Alto, Oakland, and the Peninsula. Rondi been all over. Uh, is a yoga teacher and a holistic nutritionist working with all who are striving for community. His focus is on black men and boys. Hey, Rondi. Oh yeah, you should just turn your sound. Well, you, you know what, just, we'll wait, we'll wait. You don't have to. Oh, no, no, we ain't gotta wait. I forgot, I gotta oh. mute myself, right? Okay. Uh, what's happening folks? How you guys doing? I am so happy and proud to be here. Uh, to share this space with 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 all of you, and um, I, I, I definitely work with uh, black men, and so my biggest focus is from, if you think about, um, and this is kind of poignant today, from Paul Robinson mm. to DMX. Yeah, <laughs> all yeah. black men. Uh, if you yeah. guys don't know, uh, Paul, Paul Robinson. Today is Paul Robinson's birthday. DMX died today. Um, and so I'm, I'm all about healing and uplifting men, black men. Okay, okay, we're gonna get back to you on it. <laughs> and then my sister comrade, muse for many, many years, Claviana Rodriguez, is a Latinx award-winning artist, cultural strategist, born and raised in Oakland. Her primary mediums are visual art and cultural organizing in the black, indigenous, and people of color communities. She is also the president of the Center for Cultural Power, a national organization investing in artists as agents for social change. Hey, Fabiana. Hi, everyone. Really excited to be here. Yeah. So, mm. you know, we're going to start with you, Fabi, you know, with um, mm. your offering mm. uh, and your your offering. Mm. What it is and about. Mm. Breath. Yes. Um, thank you. And I hope you could feel the energy of my plants. They have all been uh, placed here um, for, for, for my enjoyment and for everyone's enjoyment. Uh, so, uh, you know, we're talking about joy and pleasure today. And um, for me, that's really an embodied practice. And it's also around understanding that um, historically, uh, many of our ancestors uh, were, um, there was not body autonomy. And so as we experience today, uh, being in our bodies, just that we honor that uh, we are a generation um, that has been able to do that. So I want to start us off with breathing and really breathing in a way where we can um, imagine our connection to our mother earth. And remember that our Mother Earth, as we breathe in deeply and as we breathe out deeply, that um, our Mother Earth helps us heal and can take um, our suffering and can replenish us with life. We are in this quantum of life. Uh, and these plants are alive. There's so much around us alive. So yeah, let's do that. Um, please find a comfortable place to sit if you can and have your um, feet on the ground and we're going to do three breaths uh, four seconds in uh, four seconds holding and then four seconds out and we're going to do that three times and in your last breath out i encourage you to release a sound um, to just use your voice as you're breathing out and to pay attention to what leaves, what is released. So let's go ahead and get started again. Uh, three breaths uh, and let's go ahead. Ah. Uh.
And as you release your breath, just feel everything releasing from uh, your heels, your feet uh, into our mother earth. And as we enter this last breath, remember to just let out your beautiful voice and um, and make it an even uh, more meaningful release. <sighs> ah. 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 Mm. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Thank you for the breath centering, Bobby. We want to uh, move to Rondi now. Mm. Fabiana, thank you so much for that. That was so grounding and yummy. Just really just brought me down. Oh, man. Um, but I'm going to do something a little different. We're going to do a little bit of movement here. Right now, I'm gonna step back from the camera a little bit, and you guys can hear me. Just give me a thumbs up if you can hear me, okay? Great. So, I want you to you can sit or stand, whatever, but I want you to go and bring your hands to your chest like you're holding a ball, right? And this ball is a ball of light, a ball of energy, your prana, your chi, your life force. And this ball is spinning at an incredible speed, right? And as you breathe in, this ball matches your breath. So as you breathe in, the ball expands. And then as you exhale, the ball contracts in, right? And so just go ahead and breathe in, let your hands open up. And then exhale, bring it back in together. Inhale, open it up. Exhale, bring it in. Now inhale, open up. And now we're gonna share this energy with the earth. And as we exhale, we're gonna push that energy down into the earth. Uh, and then cup your hands and bring that energy back up towards you. Bring it up back towards you. And then exhale, go and push it back down. Inhale, scoop it up. Bring that energy back in towards you. And then exhale, bring it back down. Now this time, go ahead and scoop it up and bring it all the way up. Inhale, inhale, raise it up, offer it. Good. And now we're just going to get into a little bit more movement. And you're going to go ahead and pivot to the right. Go ahead and turn that right foot out into like a warrior one stand. And then exhale, that ball of energy, go ahead and release it to the earth. Mother Earth, and then inhale, bring it back up, and then go and pivot to the left, and exhale, bring it back down to Earth. Inhale, bring it back up, and let's pivot to that right hand side again. Exhale, inhale, bring it all the way back up, and exhale, over to the left. Inhale, let's come back to center. Come all the way back to center. And this time, as you exhale, bring that energy into yourself. Bring your hands down to your side. Go ahead and feel the energy pulse through you. Feel your connectedness to Mother Earth. Feel the energy, feel the prana flow through you. Let's go ahead and bring our hands together at our center. Ubuntu. Oh, wonderful. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yes, understanding and being the power of culture, the power of joy is an embodied practice. Yeah, it's an embodied experience. So thank you, Rodney, Rodney for that. Um, Mush, you're offering to center us today for our listening. Thank you. 
Thank you, Rondi, and thank you, Favi. Um, that was really great. Um, for everyone that's listening, I want to invite you. You can do this next exercise uh, just silently to yourself, or if you have uh, your phone in front of you, maybe open it up to your note-taking app um, or a piece of paper next to you. Um, Today's conversation is centered around joy and the power of culture. I'm a poet and I'm a writer. And um, I think truly the first time I realized and tasted joy in my writing was when I realized that our stories, my story as an Asian American woman, but our collective stories as people of color um, isn't confined or defined just to the context of war and struggle and pain. And so I invite us in the next hour or so to really think about what are the new stories that we need to be telling that are true and what are new stories that are so big and so vast um, that, they fit, that they've always felt maybe unattainable, um, but maybe it's possible now. So just put a pin in that and I'm going to do a very simple exercise. It's 10 questions. If you're an organizational leader on the call, you can use this as a warm up. If you're a writer, you can use this as a self prompt for yourself for the next piece of writing you do. Or if you're just kind of a listener and reflector, you can hold on to it and just notice what's coming up for you. Questions. So, joy, like every good story, um, will end up producing more questions than answer. Oh, I wonder why I feel so joyful right now. Um, good leaders, like great stories, are also um, people, in my experience, who bring us um, more questions than answers. So, there are tw 10 questions that I'm going to invite you to answer. And just go ahead and write down whatever feels right for you. The first set of questions, um, and this I call the story of self. So this is the story of you. It's a little exercise. What are four questions that you wish the world would stop asking you today? I'll say that one more time. What are four questions that you wish the world would stop asking you today? Uh, you can start with one and then um, you can maybe finish it off later just for the sake of time. The next three questions, I invite you to write three questions that you recently you recently, like maybe yesterday, discovered the answers to. Three questions that you have been asking for a very, very long time that you've just recently discovered the answers to. The next two questions are two questions that just no longer serve you. Maybe they're questions you've asked as a child. Why did my parents split up? Why did my mother leave when I was 10? For whatever reason, you realize that asking this question no longer has any powerful purpose or transformative element in your life. You're done with these two questions. And the final question is, um, what's a question that you will begin asking your life as a warrior for collective liberation? What is one new question that you have not asked yourself that you will begin asking of your life as a warrior for collective liberation. And that's it, 10 questions. Thank you. Hmm. Thank you, Mush. You wanna turn your back on so we can see you? We really love to, and I just don't know how. I wonder what happened, okay. Well, there's a little like little TV screen at the bottom of the, do you want to try that? There's a video, like video icon there yeah. too. Try turning that on and off. I did. And it's like, um, it's a gray, it's given me a gray block. Hmm. And it kind of automatically turned gray on me. So, um, okay. 
Well, try leaving, session, back. Though, so. try, try leaving and coming back into the session and we'll wait a second. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So while we're waiting for, for Mush to come back, navigating the technology, oh, the joy of technology. Um, Rondi and Fabi, be thinking about, I, I have a question I want to ask the three of you all that I want y'all to take a moment to think about it, but I also want you to answer it rather briefly. And it might be a, a bit of a heavy question. So let's let's wait to, Bush, you're back. And we can see you. Okay, <laughs> wonderful. So I was, I was just saying to Rondi and to, um, that I have a question I want to I want to ask you all before you share a little bit more about your work, your practices, and, and your embodiment of power and how it shows up. And I want you to take a moment to think about it, but I also want you to answer it rather briefly, just in the in the spirit of hoping to get through this conversation in the amount of time that we have. So, uh, and Rondi, we can start with you. The question is, what joy made it possible for you to survive? background our foundation um, that that uh, that holds me uh, uh, that I can always fall back on that's always there with me uh, that always guides me uh, when I choose to listen <laughs> um, uh, it's just ancestral you know, the ancestors, um, when I've listened, have always put me in the right direction and gave me um, that type of, of satisfaction that, that fosters joy, that brings on joy. Right. I would definitely say and, and ancestors, the ancestors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fabiana? Um, I will definitely have to say that it's my art. Um, I grew up in Oakland during the era of the war on drugs and art was a place I could escape to and create a different story and go to other worlds. Uh, and culture, you know, hip hop was being born um, the murals in the streets, the, uh, the remnants that you could still feel from Black power that were in Oakland in the 80s and 90s. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, art, song, expression uh, is, is, is how I survived and it's why I'm an artist today. Beautiful. Thank you. Mush, what joy made it possible for you to survive? I mean, everything Rondi and Favi just shared, and there's so many. Um, on a, you know, as a writer, the, uh, like I said, the joy of understanding that my story is much broader than the pain of my ancestors, it's broader than the pain of my own little life. That was absolutely transformative for me as a writer and as an artist, as a mother and as a woman. Uh, I really felt the joy of, of true forgiveness uh, of myself. And I won't go into details, but just a sense of I need mercy from everyone around me. Uh, and knowing that if I need it, why would I ever keep that from the people that, you know, deserve forgiveness and healing too from me and mercy from me? That has been profound. Um, this world is too hard to hold on to you know, anger, resentment. And so when I think about the, the relationships, whether it's marriage or friendships that, are, that have hurt me um, and that I've put myself in, uh, really, really deep, deep, profound, redeeming forgiveness and love has, uh, has, has brought me back to my joy and power. Thank you. Thank you for the, your generous answers, you know, and that inquiry. And I think it's a, a, a wonderful way for us to just move into, you know, what's next for our time together. And, and Mush, we can, 
uh, you know, the storytelling um, that is being brought forth today, I'd, I'd like if you would start, you know, to share a little bit about your art practice and your presentation, if that's good. Are you good with going first? Yeah, of course. Um, okay. I'll, I know I, I have six minutes. I, I want to be mindful of time. If it's all right, I'm just going to do the damn thing. Which Girl, is, uh, the damn. I'm going to go ahead and do the damn thing real quick. So everyone who's joining who doesn't know me, I'm a Bay Area girl born in San Francisco. Just like a kid of immigrant parents, I was, you know, shuffled everywhere. My grandfather's house, my grandmother's house, my uncle's house, my uncle's neighbor's cousin's house. And so um, I, I claim San Francisco in my heart, the tenderloin, the corner of Eddie and Polk. But I also grew up um, in Foster City, in Daly City, in Hercules um, and most recently in Oakland, my parents have had uh, small businesses, coffee shops and sandwich shops in Oakland since the 80s before stuff was beautiful and before we had boutiques and all of that. <laughs> um, uh, so I feel a deep sense of belonging here, but, you know, in a lot of places. And I just wanted to offer a little story about who I am and why I think Asian women are so fucking beautiful. <laughs> My America is a brick that dreams of becoming a waterfall. My America is a name heavy on the tongue. My America is mothers and rivers of milk. My America is heavy like the hyphen that bridges all that is human and heaven, self and other. Everyone thinks it's so easy to violate Asian women, possess Asian women, Purchase Asian women, talk over Asian women, comfort inside Asian women. Shit, even Asian women will stoop to stomping on each other to get to where they want to get to because that's the material output of white supremacy, capitalism, and patriarchy in America. It is to maim. It's to steal. It's to outlanguage us of the skin we're in. But understand this, that I am an Asian woman and I was born loud. I'm an Asian woman and I was born with fucking fight. I'm an Asian woman and I was born a slug. I'm an Asian woman. I was born to thug it out when there just wasn't enough. I'm an Asian woman and I was sent from the past. I'm an Asian woman and I battle fast. I'm an Asian woman. I eat last. I'm an Asian woman. And Asian women, we long to be soft and silent by choice without reason. You know, like the white girls get to. I'm an Asian woman. And Asian women, we dream of one day putting down our guns. I'm an Asian woman, Asian women, for once we deserve to feast first when the rice is still hot and the army stew is still rich in meat, when the rice wine is still cold and the clay pot still steams. I'm an Asian woman. So let this be a blessing for every single one of us, for women who heal, for women who heal other women. Blessed be women and women and women because women have always been at the center of all things beautiful to me. Stacey Ann Chin, blessed are angry women. Blessed are rageful women. Blessed are thunder women and protest women. Blessed are women who have forgiven with mercy that pours like long, soft rain. I said, blessed are women who rage. Blessed are women whose rage has not been endured in vain. The greatest myth about anger is that it always goes to waste. But what is anger if not a pearl of possibility in the calcified mouth of this hard ass world? And who's to say that women who rage don't also believe in a place beyond the city's pain? They did. An angry woman understands perhaps more than most how anger in its purest form, it's really just a small story of sadness that's choking on a whispered prayer. So who better to lead the nation towards healing than she? the gold woman, the thunder woman, the black woman, the amber skinned woman, the forgotten woman, the poet wo woman, who better than she, the gold woman, the thunderclap woman, the black woman, the amber skinned woman, the forgotten woman, the poet woman, to teach us to choose love over lectures, sound over silence, mercy over misery, I say. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Thank you for coming off of mute to say. Yes. 
I'm like, don't get off the mute and be like screaming while she's trying to do her thing. Like, yo, yo. Wow. Yes. Yeah. I just, you know, that's just a little poem. And, uh, you know, it, it, all of this is to say my everything I've constructed, my life, my business, my relationships, even uh, an engagement like this, everything is centered around people who believe and love stories. I don't care what the discipline is or, you know, if you create, we all create culture, some of us more intentionally. And if you do that, I love you. Um, I love the story. I love where the story has brought my life. I love the wounds the story has brought me to. Um, you know, as an Asian American woman, maybe some folks can relate. My parents were, you know, like, be the doctor, whatever. You know, we, we had to sleep on a dirt floor for you to get here, blah, 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 you know. And I really very early on at the age of like 14 or 15 said, nah, and I just kind of held to that nah. And, um, you know, I, I run a consultant company and I work get to work with folks like Ashara and Rondi and Fabi and, and I get to work with brilliant BIPOC leaders who you know are sh are truly shaping and transforming culture for liberation. And to me, what greater joy is that than to be able to create a world, my world, um, that looks, feels, and moves like the larger world that I hope one day my son will be able to inherit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I'm just there checking was, out the chat, but check out the chat. Check out the chat, you know, and uh, accept the love that, that's been given to y'all. You know, when we were talking about uh, organizing for this conversation, which is still unfolding the way it unfolds, the way artists do, we were talking about the elements, yeah? And like the water, who's bringing the water, who's bringing the fire, who's bringing the ether and the earth and the air. And it's like, yo, that was the fire. Mm. Fire, come on with it. <laughs> it's like, mm. come on with it. Rondi, you're up. You're oh, up. my goodness. I, I, how am I supposed to go after that? How am I, oh, who, who am I supposed to go after that? Rondi, oh, Rondi, don't even think of it. Like for you. <laughs> that was, I was just warming up the stage for you. You know what I mean? That's Ooh. what it is. I'm your Ooh. owner, Rondi. All right, all right, all right. Well, Mush, I, you said something that, 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 you know, you said this this little poem was nothing little about that poem, girl. It was big and powerful and beautiful. You know, um, just and thank you. That was awesome. Um, I guess the best way to tell uh, what I do is basically a story, and um, um, I got all these storytellers around me. But I'll uh, it, it's pretty much the history of my life. Um, born in Los Angeles. Um, South Central, Compton, right? Um, moved to the Bay Area. I, we actually moved to Palo Alto. We moved from this all black community to this all white community <laughs> at the age of nine, right? And uh, it was a, a, kind of a culture shock for me, right? Um, parents kind of split up. So I, I, at one point, I had one parent in East Palo Alto, one parent in Palo Alto. And I was actually going across that proverbial have and have not bridge, that unseen bridge, sometimes it is seen. Um, and so I, 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 I got to see a lot of how the haves and how, have nots live. Um, and so I was kind of really, you know, did the thing they're supposed to do, you know, go to school, go to college and, and do that. But none of that really felt, felt right for me. None of it felt felt comfortable. Felt like this is my my thing, and so for the longest time, I kind of wandered around aimlessly, you know, no really direction or goal in mind. And uh, and uh, I I happened to walk into a, a yoga studio one day, not knowing what yoga was not knowing at all what it was and uh, took my first yoga class and uh, uh, walked out of there like, that ain't nothing, right? I don't know, I don't know what they, what the big whoop is about. I'm like, whatever, dude, right? But later on that day, I, I felt how I felt. I'm like, ooh, I feel good. I feel, I feel good. Let me, 
let me go check out this yoga thing again. So I went back, notice how it's feeling a little later. I'm like, man, there's something about that yoga. There's something about that, about that. So now I jump in with two feet, right? I'm going every day, three times a day. <laughs> I did a couple of teacher trainings, you know, did the whole thing, right? Uh, and um, decided to teach and that did not go well. So, you know, to do yoga and to teach yoga is two different things. So I kind of failed in the beginning at doing yoga, at teaching yoga. I was like, oh, well, just let me just practice. And so once I learned my voice, uh, found my voice, I was more comfortable in teaching. Um, I was teaching at shelters, anywhere I can teach, right? So then I go back in the studio, start teaching in the studios. Next thing I know, they're asking me to go, to come to Stuttgart, Germany to teach yoga to refugees. So I go, took six months off and taught refugees, African Arab refugees, Eastern Europeans, uh, Northern Africans, um, for like six months. And it was an amazing experience being in a, in a room like, you know, international, right? Like everyone's in this room. I come back to United States and I'm, now I'm lost again. Cause I'm like, well, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? And I, and you know, after some soul searching, I, I was like, you know, I'm tired of going into these yoga studios and being the only guy and then just always the only black guy, right? And I was like, how come my, my brothers don't, don't know about this? And so, you know, I was like, well, build it and they will come. So I started reaching out, you know, hey man, check out this yoga. I'm going, I'm going to be the teacher, you know, and it started to grow It started to build up, it started to grow start to expand and um the brothers start to come in they start to come out like wow this is happening and then what happened i couldn't get these guys to leave we would practice yoga for an hour at 12 and we wouldn't leave the building to like three and i was like hey you guys I, i'm like what's happening so now i noticed that now they're open we do this yoga and they're open and they just want to connect they want to they want they they want to be men and just connect and just dialogue and, and, and all that. And so we decided to do a book club. So that is the evolution of barbershop yoga. It's a, a yoga slash book club uh, for black men and boys. And um, um, we're partnering with an organization called um, Create the Space, where they have a black man come on stage and they speak their truth. And right, so after you let go of all that trauma in your body, now you're wide open. Now you're ready for yoga. So it's like this pipeline, get on stage, tell your truth, let it all go. Now let's come into yoga and let's work on fulfilling that empty space. Now that you're getting some of that trauma out of your body, let's fill it in with joy. Um, laughter, happiness, right? Thank you. Mm. Get open, get open, get filled up. So good. Thank you, Rondi, for that, that work. Fabiana? Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, I am going to... So share my screen. Sorry, I, I know that's really annoying, but I have to find my key. There it is. Okay. It is. Okay, but we see like an infinity into your screen. Okay, I think that's better. There you go. How how about now? Do you see um, an image with a lot of hands on it? Yes. Great. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, again, my name is Fabiana Rodriguez, and I am an artist and activist, and what I would like to share is my art. I want to um, 
you know, when we talk about joy and healing, uh, so much of it is something that happens in our bodies, in our imagination. And for me as an artist, I make things with that joy. Like I, uh, my transformation um, happens with my hands too. And so the art that I make is really a recording or a witnessing of my joy. Uh, and for me, healing is something that brings me a lot of joy. This is a collage that I created that really celebrates my uh, Peruvian heritage. Um, and it's about the metaphor of the cloth, of, of weaving, of the symbols that uh, were used uh, throughout Andean culture. My family is from Peru. Uh, my father was Afro-Peruvian. My mom was uh, Limeña, is Limeña from Lima, uh, and um, they would have, it in my home, there was always a lot of color. And so this is my studio, and it's, uh, I, I've, I'm, I've been so shaped by uh, the graffiti in the streets and just the colors of all the, the beautiful um, art that was in my house that was from Mexico, Panama, Peru, right, all of South America. And um, I see myself as a culture keeper. I am um, continuing the traditions of printmaking, of paper, of uh, working with color and um, working with uh, symbols. And I love uh, creating faces that remind me of the codices that I would see when I was growing up, right? So codices are, the drawings that you would find in some of the um, uh, historical like Aztec or Mayan uh, drawings and writings. Uh, and that has very much influenced how I create. And for me, you know, my ultimate, I, I'm just so happy that we have this human body because this human body has eyes and we are able to see color because of the reflection of light right? Really what color is, is how much light you are or are not seeing that is bouncing off the surfaces. Uh, so as I, when I create, you know, I think about the materials I work with, I think about where they're from, I think about the meaning of color and how uh, for a long time, actually, the, the art world uh, wanted to suppress color. Um, because, and this is why, you know, often when you go into a museum, you're in a white cube, this, this idea that somehow whiteness was the norm and color is, you know, loud or disruptive or not the norm, but I kind of flip all of that. This piece, Migration is Beautiful, is one of my most popular pieces, and it's really about the right for all living things to move and to migrate. Uh, this piece is a recent collage. Uh, my foundation is as a artist activist and many of my teachers like Emery Douglas, uh, Carlos Cortez, Yolanda Lopez, uh, really influenced me to combine image and text and to um, communicate uh, action or to inspire people uh, to be mobilized. Uh, I am about feeling. It's about, you know, feeling everything. Like in here, I'm really feeling my period, as you can see. Um, and my work is also around friendship, connection, uh, deep listening, love. And it's, it's just about the beautiful things that nature gives us, you know, like the, I, I love creating, I love plants in real life and I like them in, in my art as well. Uh, this is actually a portrait of my living room, which I'm in my living room right now. So this you can you'll recognize that blue couch. Uh, this is all works on paper. And then finally, is that my work is about pleasure. It's about um, getting off, loving your body. You know, like I so many messages that I got, and I'm sure a lot of folks got, is around. Uh, it is a pain oriented narrative around our bodies, right? So uh, keep your legs closed, don't let anyone touch you. And really that's historical. That's because 
um, um, our ancestors' bodies were exploited. And so for me, part of my sexual liberation is also a big part of the joy that I do. Uh, I'm a big fan of Adrienne Marie Brown's book, Pleasure Activism. My art is in that book. Uh, this is a screen print that is called Pleasure is Power. Uh, and finally, just, you know, my, my work is around uh, really challenging notions of domination and extraction and um, being in more harmony with the earth, but also recognizing that we historically, through colonization, slavery, uh, and the extraction of the natural world, uh, we have been robbed of our, and, and we, our bodies have been used as weapons against the natural world. Uh, and so a lot of my art is around returning to a balanced state and moving away from domination toward, towards true uh, collaboration. So um, that is, you could find me on Instagram. Uh, my website is faviana.com. And uh, if you want to support my work, best thing you can do is buy my art because I am an artist. Thank you. Yes, yes. Collect the. Oh yay! Thank you. That's what <laughs> that. Pull it happened. back a little bit so we can see it. Hold it back just a oh, little bit. The plastic. Yeah. It's, oh, it's, it's in the plastic. Yeah. I know. This my, I have Fabiano's work too. Oh yeah, yeah. There it is. There's my I work. Of work. <laughs> yes. I know. It's hanging on the walls downstairs in my living room. Yeah, I have a lot of your work too. Thank you all. Thank you for this um, this generosity that you've offered today. Uh, do each of you have one additional cultural practitioner who is bringing the joy and the power and the love that you're wit you're witnessing them? You maybe you know them, maybe you don't. And uh, either way, can you drop in in the chat like a link to their work? But let's let's just uh, give voice to them. Like, Mush, who's someone who's bringing the as you know, artist as first responder is 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 my trope right now. And so it's how I view your work. And I also know that there are so many more uh, people that that we're loving and respecting and witnessing. Yeah, so many. I mean, I really, it's, it, I'm not being like a, a brown noser. Like, I really love all three of you. <laughs> like, I really love you. This is sincere. Uh, Korean women were terrible liars. So this is uh, um, sincere. <laughs> I, you know, I love the work of Tohi Lee. She is a Korean American shamanist, uh, drummer, uh, spirit, a community healer. So I'll put her uh, website in the in the chat. She is just somebody since I was 14 and working in North Oakland at the Korean Community Culture Center. She, I would hear her drumming in the side at, in the room next door, and I, uh, she is just uh, phenomenal. She takes ancient practices. Uh, from Korean shamanism and brings them and ties them with mixed media with artists like Fabi, with um, set designers, with uh, costumes, like it just, and with movement workers. And so I'll, I'll put her info in the chat. I want to show. Yes, indeed. Yep. Dohi Lee. I agree. Rondi, who you got for us? Hi. Um, so I'll be quick, but I got two, two people. Um, and they are both part of the barbershop yoga. Um, one is Ashanti Branch from the Ever Forward Club, uh, uh, 100,000 K mask, 100,000 mask. And um, uh, they're all about, his thing is all of working with young boys, young, young men uh, about their emotions, about showing who they really are. So when they think they do, you draw a picture and show a mask. And on one side of the mask, uh, the one that people see, you write out what you let people see. On the other side of the mask, you write what you hide from other people. Um, so Ashanti Branch is, is um, I wanna definitely highlight him. Um, also, uh, Denzel Herrera Davis. He is the founder of Create the Space, our To Me For You, where I talked about where black men get on stage uh, on, a, on a platform. Mm -hmm. tell their truth, speak their truth, right? Um, and they're both based right here in Oakland. Good, thank you. Fabia, you've 
Yeah, I see you've been putting some. Do you want to say some yes. folks? Too? Um, Adrian Marie Brown, and um, who talks about uh, pleasure activism. Um, and I would say also, I'm very proud of the work of my organization, um, the Center for Cultural Power. And we feature a lot of amazing BIPOC artists who are just always uh, creating art about the things we're dealing with, whether it's like stopping Asian hate or addressing police violence, defunding the police, the climate crisis. Uh, we show a lot of art, so I'm going to share the social media account. Okay. Perfect. And I dropped in uh, the link for my friend, Mike Nichols, who is a beautiful designer. Uh, he published a zine uh, a couple of years ago called Umber and now is expanding it into a whole publishing company. And it's, it's brilliant and beautiful and just speaks to uh, black and brown indigenous Latinx communities. Um, and yeah, I want, I want us to support you know, him bringing it out. So I put in a link for their, it's not a Kickstarter, but it's a, a succeeding pledge that's happening right now. It's so beautiful. So please check that out. And the other person I want to shout out is um, my beloved sister friends at uh, Houseful of Black Women. Amara Tabor Smith, Ellen Sebastian Chang, uh, Dr. Stephanie Ann Johnson, uh, Alexa Burrell, I mean, on and on and on, um, Keisha, so this work that they have been doing over the years, I've put in a link to the page on the Deep Waters Dance Theater page. Um, yes, Amara is, is on fire right now with many beautiful awards, including a Guggenheim Award. Thank you for shouting that out, Fabiana. So um, I know we're, we're coming up on time here. And let's see, I see CTA is like, we're weaving up next, 2.30. There's some choices coming up, inclusive economies as well, climate equity, uh, design, African-American communities. These are, are beautiful conversations also coming up. Where can we find you all? Mosh, what's your website and your, your social media handle? And Rondi, what's yours? Yeah. And put it in, put it in the link too, because I know Fabiana, could you drop yours also back into the into the link? And yeah, part of my website. Um, everything is Whole Story Group, so it's www.wholestorygroup.com. Uh, if you're interested in collaborations or partnering, if you want to just come hang out on social media, it's I'm on IG, Instagram at uh, the cool. handle is Whole. I'll put both of those in the chat. Okay. And I know we're going to wrap it up. And so I have I have this final question, and it's, it's a little bit longer than I thought it might be. But how are you all exploring, pulling parts of yourself and your practice into the future, this future of if there is such a thing? How are you pulling parts of yourself into it? And, you know, maybe yeah. give I think, me a one breath answer. Yes, uh, I think about this a lot. I want to leave behind infrastructure for artists of color. Uh, and I want them want to leave behind wealth and power and leadership and resources so that they can create and they don't have to deal with this white supremacist art system. That part. Thank you. Rondi? Um, I am, I, technology really makes me crazy, so I don't know how to do the chat, but you guys look me up on Instagram at Rondi Yoga, R-O-N-D-Y-O-G-A. Um, my whole thing is collaboration. I, I, I want to collaborate um, with, uh, with, 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 with my brothers and sisters of color and see what we can build and grow. Thank you. And Mush? The question is what do we want, what I want to leave behind? Well, that's one way to answer it. Oh, yeah. What, what, what are you exploring pulling parts of yourself and your practice into the future? How are you oh. exploring? How am I exploring? I mean, I think it, on the most basic level, I'm exploring how to continue um, standing firm in the fact that love is really just, it belongs everywhere, you know? Mm. It belongs everywhere. And, and women who look like me, we belong and we belong to, we deserve to take up space, not at the expense necessarily of our brothers and sisters and siblings in the struggle, which is all of us, um, but we deserve that. Um, I think that is the road that I wanna keep paving. Um, Thank you. Yeah. 
Thank you all for your beautiful offerings and your generosity today, your light, fire, water, air, earth, um, for just living into the power of our culture and being cultural workers, cultural practitioners, and badass artists. Mm -hmm. Thank you all. Thank you, CTA, for this Thank conversation you. for the panel today. Y'all just check into the next session. Check yes. Next session. Talk to y'all soon.